Hello, everyone. Bye. This is Dr. Julian here again with another of my colleagues. Um, I'm so excited to be able to have these conversations who I think are uh, changes in aquaculture, changes of the future, especially in the Caribbean and especially women. And today I have with me here uh, Dr. Amina Moss, who I met in Malaysia <laughs> in 2017, right? at the World Aquaculture, well, I think so, I think so. <laughs> but I know it was at that, that's why I remember is because we were one of possibly only two uh, women from the Caribbean at that meeting and it was in World Aquaculture Society in, um, right. in Malaysia. So, and that was very exciting meeting for me. It was the first time I'd been to Asia, but you've been living in Japan. And so I want everyone to hear your story um, how did you get to Japan? What were you doing there? And, um, and what, what is your specialty? I know it's fish nutrition. So to just tell us a little bit more about you. Boy, long stories. Um, <laughs> how much time do we have? Uh, let's see. So yeah, I, I think you're, you're correct. I think it's 2017, um, World Aquaculture Society, right? When we met. And I think I, I spotted you across the room and I realized you were the, the only person that almost looked like me. And I said, <laughs> I right? To to her, right? It, it's always this thing when you're in Asia, you see somebody that looks like you, even if you don't know them and they're across the street. Yes. <laughs> you feel like you need to cross the street and actually um, start a conversation with them essentially, right? right? So we had to talk essentially. But um, how did my journey start? So I initially started as a biochem major at the College of the Bahamas, right? Now it's the University of the Bahamas. Um, so I started as a biochem major. I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be an oncologist, um, basically, you know, cancer doctor. And so that was my passion. And I realized that I just wanted to do it because I could. I was very into the sciences and I realized that everybody who did biochem just went into the, the doctor route. Right, or the lab, as in the Caribbean, route. yes. Right. Yeah. So I saw that all my friends wanted to be doctors and I didn't want to be um, just another doctor, <laughs> just another oncologist. I wanted to do something different. And at the time, I, um, COB in Columbia, Bahamas, that there were no marine science um, programs at all. Okay. And I was so, yeah, I was so interested in the marine sciences. I wanted to do something um, related to that. So what I did was I saw, um, oh gosh, I forgot the name of that university, but I saw a, a quick, like a short course program on aquaculture, like an introduction to aquaculture program. And it was just a, a six weeks um Certific certification right. program yeah right so uh, it was held in the u.s and I, I could do it online so i i started that and i was so interested i was captivated by aquaculture i wanted to learn more about it so i was trying to figure out how do i go from biochem to aquaculture right so i went through a whole two years of, of just wandering around not doing anything um, related to my major, I, I just um, worked as a secretary, uh, as a receptionist here and there to, to make money. And, and I was searching online and I found, um, actually one day um, my coworker showed me a, um, an ad from, from the Japanese government in our oh, okay. newspaper. Right. And she said, um, you, you, you majored in the sciences, right? I said, yes. She said, are you interested in, in going to Japan? I'm like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I applied, but the, the thing is, I applied, I submitted everything before the deadline, but there were some issues, some miscommunication in the Ministry of Education. So they okay. received it before the deadline, but they submitted it after the deadline because we don't have an embassy of Japan in the Bahamas. It's actually okay. Jamaica, right? It's in Jamaica. So they would have had to send the documents to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So they received it on time, but they, they took too long to send it to Jamaica. Oh, Right. So what happened was a lady named Miss Russell, who worked at the embassy of um, Japan in Jamaica, she called me angry. Why did you submit it so late? Your application was so good. I'm like, what? <laughs> I submitted it on time. She said, no, we received it just today, you know, and, and we never had a beh behemoth applicant. Right. So we, we really wanted to put your application forward. Right, it's too late. Right. Oh no. So yeah, she told me to apply the following year and the following year came and I, and I actually forgot when the deadline was. I Googled it, I couldn't find it, but luckily that same week she called me 
she called me and said, hello, I'm waiting for your application. It was meant to be. <laughs> it was meant to be. So she said, first, to send it to her um, online, and I can just submit it th- through the government, you know, the, the long way. Right. But at least she'll have it because it's online, and she can start processing it. So there I went. I processed it. And I found out from the government that they only showed the, the ad once per year, one day per year. Wow. So wow. my coworker who showed it to me, I'm so grateful to her. I'm like, she saw it on, on that one day per year. <laughs> How random is that? So anyway, yeah, I applied and um, my husband, I was married at the time. So my husband and I went to Japan and um, I started my master's in aquaculture, fish nutrition. Okay. And yeah, so but while I was doing my master's, my first daughter was born. Um, she's now seven. So she was born in Japan and she spoke it fluently until we left. And now she, wow. she's, <laughs> yeah, we're in, we're in the Bahamas now. So she com- completely forgot her oh, Japanese. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so I did my master's and then I went on to do my, my PhD and while doing my PhD, my second daughter was born in Japan as well. And then, um, once I completed my PhD, I returned home to Bahamas. So what I know Japan is like, um, one of the best places to study aquaculture. So tell, tell me about that experience in studying, uh, there, what kind of species did you work with? What was it like? Did you study in Japanese? Um, so initially, whenever you apply for the Japanese government scholarship, they allow you to have the first six months. Um, well, the first six months, you're pretty much a um, Japanese student, right? So you're just studying the Japanese language. Oh, okay. Right, because they want you to be able to communicate in Japan. Most Japanese um, speak Japanese, of course. Right. And they don't um, communicate very well in English. So they want us to be able to communicate with um, the locals, right? Mm-hmm. So um, most persons, whenever you go, they ask you what your level is and they'll, they'll let you sit an exam if you believe your level is beyond the beginner level. Okay. So there were some students who actually did study Japanese prior to going to Japan and those oh, okay. persons had, yeah, they, they had the opportunity to go ahead and go into the intermediate levels or even the, the expert levels for some, right? So of course I had, I just knew Konnichiwa. <laughs> so um, in that instance, what happened was I had to do the beginners um, classes. Um, so um, the beginners classes allow you to be able to communicate at a kindergarten level essentially right, right? right you can't really new- read in the newspaper you can't really have an in-depth conversation but you can at least understand what they're saying and you can reply okay right so i would say most of the classes actually were in english oh right? good for you because <laughs> i mean at the higher yeah. level studies in in another yes. language okay even if there, were, there was only one foreign student in the class they would do their best to communicate in English and have the writing okay. in Japanese or okay. vice versa. So when I say vice versa, the, 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 the lecturers who were not able to communicate in English, they would have the writing in English mm-hmm. and they would speak in Japanese. So their slides would be in English, but you would, you would just have hear them talk in Japanese. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Right. So, um, but as you, you, you go, because, because I did my master's in PhD, so the higher I go, the, the more I understand Japanese. Right. So, so, right. right. The easier it is to actually understand what they're saying. Of course, the writing is still a bit difficult, but I can understand what they're saying. I can ask questions in Japanese and those kinds of things. What were your studies? What do you focus on? So my focus was basically on shrimp aquaculture. That was my core um, study. Actually, I wanted to, to, to do lobster, but um, the shrimp that they have over there, they call it the kuruma shrimp. The kuruma shrimp is actually very large. It's, it's pretty much a prawn. Is it freshwater right? or marine? No, I actually did not study any freshwater fish or, or, okay. or fresh fish. Okay. I just focus on marine. Because in the Bahamas, we are you know, an island and yeah. we actually don't have m- much fresh water, right? Mm-hmm. We don't have that many rivers and lakes anyway, no okay. mountains, right? So we tend to mainly, if not only, eat um, marine species. So I focused on um, marine fish, marine shrimp. So I focused on the kuruma shrimp, which I get, again, this is a large prawn. And actually the diet, the kuruma shrimp is very similar to, to the spiny lobster's diet. Oh, okay. Right? 
right? So that was my main motivation to studying that because eventually I wanted to, to um, you know, end up in the spiny lobster field, right? Right. And then um, I also did the Japanese flounder fish, which is mm. another, um, right, uh, flatfish. <laughs> very uh the first time I saw it I was scared because you know the, it has this the eyes, eyes the eyes time. look like they're they're right. cross-eyed <laughs> and then they were so big and and when you handle them they're very slippery and, and they put up a big fight so I was so scared to handle them the first time but that's a technique and I, I eventually learned it and right. um because we're not used to such rest. big fish we're not used yeah, to yeah. such big fish right right and they grew really, really big. Wow, I was so, so surprised. Um, so in my lab, I had I worked alongside persons who did the sebum, the amberjack. So we were able to help each other out. Because our lab is just close, like a close knit family. So we help each other out in the research. And I um, mainly um, focus on fatty acid, amino acid, like okay. um, analysis. So a lot of persons who need help with that, I would help them with. Um, that aspect of it so this is how I was able to pretty much collaborate with my um, fellow lab mates and you use your biochemistry because there's a lot of biochemistry right there so even if you if you study all the sciences as your first degree you can um, definitely move over into aquaculture because aquaculture encompasses all sciences at some right. point or the other so you are able to utilize your past degree in, in fatty acid and amino acid analysis. Exactly. So yeah. um, what were you what were you looking for? Um, so I knew of course that although Japan is a lovely country and I had the chance to work there if I really wanted to, I knew that I wanted to come back to the Bahamas, right? This is where I'm from, this is where I'd like to develop aquaculture. Aquaculture here is very primitive. Well, okay. it's not the word I would use, but it's not. It's in, in it's in its infancy stages, essentially, right? So we right. have a lot of um, failed attempts at um, starting aquaculture. Right? Why do you think that Versus, is? Like, um, at, at how long, how many years do you think aquaculture has been attempted in the Bahamas? How? Why do you think? So every time I, I tell persons that my, my um, field is aquaculture, they keep on saying, oh, there was this farm that, that used to do this, that, and that, you know, and they were up to five years, three years, you know, and, and there was a particular farm too that, that I know of that um, I think it was up and running for about five years. It was a shrimp, shrimp farm. It was an indoor um, grass, you know, um, recirculating um, system. Mm -hmm. It was very far from the ocean. And I believe it was... Um, the Vanna May shrimp, right? And um, I don't know why it failed, to be quite honest. I haven't actually spoken with the owner. I'm not sure if they're even the Bahamas in mind. Right. I know they were foreigners who were trying to, 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 to get it started. Mm -hmm. um, I think a little bit has to do with um, the support from the community. A lot of persons hair farmed something and, and they think it's not, it's not natural, you know? For instance, okay. tilapia. To this yeah. day, tilapia per person still think that tilapia is a man-made fish, right? Really? Yes. If you ask the average Bahamian, they will say, "Oh, it's man-made fish. It's not a real fish." So, I so do you have do you have a ministry of fisheries and aquaculture? Is there any kind of um, government aquaculture support that can dispel uh, these notions about? you know, the cultural aspects of tilapia? Well, the thing is our government has in its mandate that it, it, it would like to, to develop aquaculture in the Bahamas. But I think right now, most efforts are going towards conservation because, you know, we're having a lot of um, species um, that are endangered and threatened. So a lot of it is going towards helping the NGOs that are geared towards conservation, right? And a lot of these um, NGOs have this anti-aquaculture mindset because they, they see what is being done in Asia or some other countries where aquaculture is, is, is polluting the oceans and they don't want to bring it into our clean, pristine waters. My thing is I'm promoting the opposite. I'm right. more into the IMTA, the, the integrated aquaculture systems 
which in turn help to clean the water and the systems naturally right. with other organisms, you know, using seaweed in conjunction with shrimp, for instance, because shrimps do produce a lot of, uh, of waste. We know that, right? And um, of course we can use filtration systems and all of that, but we can also reduce costs by using natural organisms, mussels, sea urchins, um, oysters, conch even, you know, right. yeah, oysters, right? And conch, because conch is one of our, our main thing, right? All of these, um, grazers and, and, and um, filter feeders and so on and sea moss, you know, we can incorporate, you know, different systems right. have them separated, right. right? Have the water from one tank go into the other, right? And basically the develop and integrated systems. This is what I'm interested in. Right. Not necessarily flow through me in the water from um, the facility goes back into the ocean, but just recirculating. So that's what I'm, I'm interested right. in researching in Bahamas. I, and the I thing see- is, Mm-hmm. Oh, Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt because I see, um, you know, just hearing this is very disappointing because um, what I, I think these NGOs, I, I don't know if they're American because I know in America it's very aquaculture, <laughs> but mm-hmm. uh, for, the, for developing countries, aquaculture is one of the main, uh, a very important source of food and food security. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. also, um, it can be used as a source of conservation, which is currently mm-hmm. what um, Dr. Megan Davis is doing with a conch, building right, right. Uh, conch hatcheries around the Caribbean to use it as a source of conservation. I think what uh, we as aquaculture scientists really need to start being more vocal that just like the other food species, we need more research. Right. As long exactly. as there is research and there is innovation and development, we can make it just as um, less we can contribute. It doesn't have to be polluting. It doesn't have to be damaging. It is a right. very right. important aspect of uh, our food security and conversation mm-hmm. uh, com- mm-hmm. uh, conservation. So I think we need we need to really just let people know that we need more support in research. So I'm glad you mentioned that part because my, um, uh, the thing I've been, I've been in the Bahamas for almost two years now, you know, coming back from Japan and my fight that I've been uh, um, lost in is the fact that most persons just want me to go from my PhD straight into open up a business and helping them create, um, well, have money, make money with aquaculture. I said, Making money with aquaculture is, is, is possible, of course, persons do it all over the world, but we can't just copy and paste whatever they do into the Bahamas, right? right. So our waters are clean, they are n- nutrient free, right? So we don't have that much ambient food in the water to actually feed the, um, the cultured species, right? So we do need to do some research and see what works for us in the Bahamas, right? And we do have a very strong um, environmental protection mindset. We, we want to protect our environment so that it continues to be clean. And, and I totally support that, of course. Of course. So in, in that vein, we, we, we would like to make uh, or do research that would actually promote that, right? We need to know what's going to work in the Bahamas. We can't just, as I said, copy and paste whatever somebody else is doing. Like, let's say somebody in, in China is doing their right. words are completely different from ours. Right. 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 So, this is what I'm trying to push, but most persons are saying, well, if it's not going to bring money, um, um, why are we even going to invest in it? Right. I said, well, we need to invest in it because we need to know what's going to work for us. Otherwise, it's a waste of money. That's why a lot of persons have been opening up farms and they've closed within three, four, five years because there's right. no research in it. They're pretty right. much taking the business plan from another country and they're using it in the Bahamas and it doesn't work that way. They have to do the research. So this that's, is why I am, right. So I'm, uh, I am working at the University of the Bahamas and I'm hoping to pretty much kickstart aquaculture courses as well as research, right? <laughs> to try and see if we can um, have persons educated in it enough that they will use their minds, they will be innovative and, and, and the, the kind of solutions they find to um, incorporate aquaculture into into our culture essentially absolutely i mean i think that's what's lacking a lot in our industry is innovation 
innovation yes. and thinking outside the box and moving ahead into the future. It's yes. aquaculture has been around forever. I mean, China, it's been centuries, but yes, we see, I mean, I, I think you went on some of the tours that we were, I don't know if you went on the tours in Malaysia and I was shocked. <laughs> I was shocked at some of the uh, open water uh, systems that they had. And, and I understand what people talk about pollution and, right. um, and what it does. But that's because they have been doing the same things for centuries and mm -hmm. increasing without trying to update to right. you know, what, what's happening in the world and more people and more population. They're just trying to do the old way of farming. So... Mm -hmm. I think what we need to do and, you know, also for our upcoming Caribbean students, I mean, I think we need to really have more Caribbean students involved in understanding that aquaculture is not just about tilapia. Right. <laughs> aquaculture is so much more aquatic foods is so much more mm -hmm. than just tilapia. And it's also more than just breeding. Right. right. It's it's mm -hmm. it's, you know, the systems, innovating the systems, engineering, environmental exactly. aspect. Right. Um, we need to even update our policy. nutrition. Yeah. Right. I was saying even policy, law and all of that. Law. All that. Right. We need all of that. In the Bahamas, we have hardly anything. It's a great area. You know, aquaculture is, is in that in, in between areas. Right. It's not quite fisheries. It's not quite agriculture. It's in that it's in its own category really but we don't have a uh, space for it yet right so we have per we, we need persons to go into aquaculture policy we need person like you said engineering um law we need all of that business you know all of that we need it we, we need and, persons and who have that like you said i grew up with the same um uh concept as you did that we had to only do medicine engineering right. <laughs> you know there was like alex what doctor, mm -hmm. lawyer, engineer, business, right? right and right. so if you tell anyone <laughs> aquaculture, what is that? You know, and having traveled, you've been to Japan, you see what a big industry it is, having traveled around the world. It is a big and lucrative industry, but yes. as scientists, um, we need to take it, uh, yes, as a business, but to input to make it um, a better business, more environmental and uh, for conf conservation and for food. And I think we need to start educating our Caribbean students that there are other options as well. Yes. You know, yes. there are other options and for innovation and for research and making money that way. Right. Even now, UB, University of Bahamas, has a marine science program, finally. And um, uh, all of the students who are in the marine science program, their career path is going to lead them into being an environmentalist or a conservationist, basically. And when, when I bring up aquaculture, they say, well, I haven't really thought about it, you know? Right. So when I try to educate them about it, they get more interested in it. But the thing is, there is practically no example of it being done in the Bahamas. So it's hard for them to actually visualize how it's going to work, right? right. So that's another thing that, that, that I'm trying to do. I'm trying to build my own setups, you know, and try to, trying to educate persons about it. But everything takes time and money. And I'm just, Absolutely. you know, yeah, I'm, I'm just going about it. I don't want to stress myself out too much because there's so many things I like to get done. And I know it's going to take a lot of time. So I'm trying to do everything step by step, doing it the right way, the behind the scenes way of trying to convince the government that this is a lucrative way to make money, you know, and it was highlighted during the pandemic where they realized that, hold on, we import over 90% of the food that we eat. What are we going right. to do once the food stops coming right. in? Right. Exactly. This is what I was approached. Right. I was approached by the Minister of Agriculture to do something, you know, to teach about aquaculture. And that, that never went through because that conversation ended once they realized that food can still come in. <laughs> But yeah. that was the slight moment of panic where everybody said, what are we going to do? You know, so many persons went into backyard farming and they went into um, aquaponics with tilapia and, and they um, ate tilapia <laughs> against their will, but it, it's food and it's free food because you're growing it yourself. Right. Um, so persons are realizing that we have to be more, well, we have to be smarter. 
right? And we have to find ways to make our own food. That's it. Right, right. I think mm-hmm. I think um, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to start talking with all my colleagues within the Caribbean and sort of, that was my inspiration for it because I felt the same thing about mm-hmm. Jamaica. I, I see that there is... Um, yes, we, we did some aquaculture, but I don't think um, there is an understanding that aquaculture is way more. There is a lot more classes that need to be taught. There's a lot more uh, mm-hmm. input that needs to be. And, and like you said, most people tend to go into marine. And so marine science, I think, correct me wrong, seems to have been elevated you know, a little bit and aquaculture has sort of been left behind in that gray area. And I, I want to be able to bring my colleagues together to expose um, more people to what aquaculture is, you right. know, and the different fields that are within aquaculture and what, um, what are the potentials for the Caribbean. So I think having these conversations and these dialogues and and maybe perhaps we can do more with some mm-hmm. other uh, scientists and maybe one day to bring on some of the governments to right. have conversations yeah. with them. I know how difficult that is, <laughs> but, but they're not scientists, right? They're, <laughs> they are not scientists. So they, have, they don't know, um, they've never studied the science. They are perhaps the policymakers, but they're not the scientists. So I think it's really important that we kind of become more vocal uh, within the space. Right, so what I want to say is the issue with with the politicians is the fact that they have a very short term, four to five years, and they want to get everything done within, you know, that term so that they can say, look, we've done this. We did this. um, Even, let's say they agree to, I don't know, opening up an aquaculture um, research center or something like that in the Bahamas. And uh, it takes a little bit longer to pick up than they, they would anticipate it, right? They would get upset because um, they the have- Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they actually w- would want to say that the success was because of them and perhaps get the votes, right? Sometimes things don't turn out the way we'd like for them to turn out and, and fish and other species take time to grow, right? And things happen, diseases, we have to adjust pH, different things like that. So um, if they don't see it happening right away, they don't feel the need to actually invest in it, you know? Right. Um, but so my field is more um, fish n- nutrition and um, shrimp nutrition, crustacean n- nutrition, right? And um, while I was in Japan, I focused more on um, using the waste of marine mollusks, right? Almost like conch, right? Because you, oh, okay. you know the conch, yeah. right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, right. And you know the conch, I would say over 70% of its live weight is actually waste because we don't, we don't eat the shell, right? Okay, I see. Right? We don't eat um, the, the visceral organs. So all of the, the red stuff, the brown stuff in it, we don't eat. The right. curriculum, we don't really eat that, right? So all of it, we, we just um, chop off and throw yeah. away. So most oh, persons, okay. right. So most persons will actually just throw it if they're near the ocean, they would throw it back into the water, right? And if not, they would put it in a garbage bag and then it would go into the landfill. And the Bahamas actually has one of the highest landfills in our region, in the Caribbean, right? Wow. Over mm-hmm. 60 meters high of, mm-hmm. of just, you know, smelly stuff right sludge essentially and a lot of it is just seafood waste right so my yeah my research is trying to use the seafood waste right and especially the the conch waste right and any fisheries where you you, you clean up a a fish even the scales are important right so all of it right you combine it and you make it into food for shrimps and for fish so that was what I researched and um, also, I want to see the potential of using sea moss, seaweed, because seaweed is usually a good binder. Yeah. Right? So one, of, one of my lab mates actually did research on that scene. That seaweed is a good binder for making the, the pellets, the shrimp pellets. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. shrimps themselves, they don't eat as quick as fish. You know, fish, if they don't eat within the, the first, like, I'd say, 10 minutes, you can pretty They're much not clean out the pellets. Yeah. Right. They're pretty much They're done. 
but shrimps, they tend to hide in the sun, even in the tanks, which tend to have sand for them. They hide in the sun, they wait. And once you go, it's okay, she's gone. <laughs> and they will go ahead and eat the, 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 the pellets you, you would have thrown out, right? So the pellets have to stay in water a little bit longer, right? So the binding right. properties of the pellets have to be much stronger than yeah. for the fish. So sea moss is a good um, ingredient to incorporate within the um, shrimp diet. Right, so we can open up a sea moss factory in the Bahamas, yeah. right? Yeah, we can make our own feed, we can have persons making their own tank, fiberglass, we can have that industry, we can have plumbers assisting, we can have electricians right. assisting, engineers, right. you know, to make the perfect tank because I'm spiny lobsters, for instance, the larvae they require a certain level of hydrodynamics in their tank, right? So we can have persons, engineers researching that, so we can have a lot of persons just you know, bringing that input to creating mm -hmm. a wonderful aquaculture industry in the Bahamas. I truly believe that. And that's my goal in the um, for the Bahamas. And I hope that I can convince somebody who has money or <laughs> who has influence in the Bahamas to get it started, really. Right, you know? right, right. And another thing that I want, I haven't started researching it, but I'd like to research in the future is insect insect meal, right? Black okay. soldiers, um, Right, black so soldier fly, um, mealworm, um, crickets, grasshoppers, all of that, they're being used in Asia, right? Mm -hmm. They're being grown, grown specifically for aquaculture um, species, um, species or um, cattle and, and this kind, you know. Oh, okay. And, and other, right. So um, the benefit, I guess, of using um, insect meal is the fact that, you know, most terrestrial organism, whether it's plants or insects, they don't have a high amount of DHA and EPA, right? Okay. Right, so whenever you're actually growing the insects, you can actually feed them, you can you can su supplement them with a little bit of, of DHA and EPA and they will absorb it in their bodies. Oh, right? like a capsule. Exactly like a capsule. Oh. Plants, you, you can't do it. You, you can't do it with right. plants, right? Mm -hmm. But with insects, you can. So instead of having to supplement the actual diet, you can just supplement the diet of the insect you're, you're growing for the purpose of feeding aquaculture um, species, right? Okay. So when, whenever you're ready to use them, you can pretty much freeze dry them and incorporate them into the, the, the actual diets of, um, let's say, shrimps, for instance, right? And another interesting finding that I saw is that um, insects have chitin, right, in their yeah. exoskeleton. And um, chitin has some sort of anti-microbial properties. Because, right. you know, of course, insects, they're in the dirt all the time. So they're yeah. they yeah. constantly exposed to bacteria. But those chitins, they have a very, very important um, anti-microbial property, right? And mm -hmm. if you supplement these insects, into the diet of let's say crustaceans again or shrimps, mm -hmm. right? They actually increase their um, immune system. Oh, right. That's interesting. It, 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 okay. Right. So th there are so many there are so much potential. I want to say with um, using insect meals and even their um, amino acid profiles, right? They're excellent for using in um, crustacean feeds simply because. They have a high level of taurine, and taurine is usually de deficient in right. um, in, in most plants. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. And um, also, um, they have a high level of, of methionine as well, right? So, I think there's a lot of potential in using insect meal, but the issue is trying to tell <laughs> because behemoths will be like, okay, so fine. I'm following you so far. You, you, you're growing your shrimp. That's fine. But why are you feeding your shrimps? Um, I'm feeding them insects. Ah, uh, see, see. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, I'm not gonna eat, eat that shrimp. So yeah. it's trying to convince people that no, it's not a bad thing. Maybe you, you know, need a different just... name. <laughs> you need marketing. <laughs> you need marketing to make it sound more uh, palatable. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's another yeah. thing as well. I think the industry could take an example from. Uh, the marketing side of things mm -hmm. and, and figure out how to uh, make it more appealing to people, to their minds, mm -hmm. their way mm -hmm. of thinking that. Um, that's another thing about science. Uh, scientists, I feel, um, can tend to be very um, just sticking to the scientific terms 
and right. not coming down. Well, not, not, I don't want to use that word, but just to make it open and accessible to, to the general population mm -hmm. who doesn't really study the science, but to make it more, uh, you know, open to them understanding a little bit more about, um, like you said, eating tilapia and maybe maybe not the one that's the uh, black one but maybe the red one the red that's one yeah grown in salt water that has a little bit more flavor so there's another thing that maybe we, that we need to look at is um, marketing and public relations and <laughs> trying to get the word out a little bit more than using the strict scientific terms I don't know yeah, think? so let's start using these big words, you know, just pretty much explain it, you know, naturally. And I think this is something that I, I probably like over, um, I, I always say scientists are not really politicians, so we have nothing to prove as right. science speaks for itself. Right. So you don't have to try and sound smart, you just explain it as you would your, your, your child, right? Not everybody is going to know what you're saying, no matter what science it is. I'm an aquaculture nutritionist. I don't necessarily understand what aquaculture engineers speak up when they say um, certain things, right? So even within the same field, persons always try to uh, outdo or I don't know, try and sound so smart with their big That's words. what it's I just, feel. So That's what I feel sometimes with scientists is yeah. that uh, outdoing the smartness rather than just trying to communicate. I think that's a word, communicate. Right. Uh, more to everyone to get across exactly what it is that is in what the field is about basically right important it's not only just um as i would say um non-scientific persons it's just even within our field sometimes That's you true. have to speak in a certain way that persons can understand what you're saying because they don't necessarily know what would you know right so you do have to try and make it more as you said palatable for persons that's the word you know, yeah. are used to hearing those big words you, you're so used to researching right and, yeah <laughs> but um you know i have a joke about the red tilapia we have a um school called bamsi in the bahamas so it's the bahamas a oh lot bahamas marine something and science <laughs> It's something like that, right? Um, they actually are trying to teach aquaculture in the Bahamas. Oh, okay. Right? Um, because they're located on, on a distant island, most persons don't have the access, you know, the, the chance to actually go and, and, and relocate to that particular island and study there. So their um, student numbers are still quite low, unfortunately, right? Okay. But they do, they do have a good aquaponics um, section where they're growing lots of lettuce and, and, and different things. And they also are growing red tilapia. So oh, whenever the red tilapia, okay. yeah, whenever the red tilapia grows big enough, they actually have a chance to harvest them and send them to our supermarkets here in Nassau, in the capital. Nice. So nice. most persons don't know that they're eating tilapia because it's marketed as red snapper. Yeah. Right. So many persons have eaten tilapia and they, they, they don't even know they. They ate didn't know exactly. They see it the and they thought. think, oh, it's snapper. <laughs> <laughs> there's no label it's just fish you know so it, it, right. they just pick up a thing that it, it, it's snapper but it's actually tilapia and if you told them that it was tilapia they'll vomit <laughs> Which, so that's, that's kind of not a good thing but it just proves yeah. that it's all in the mind basically it's almost like a blind test you know yeah yeah <laughs> it's just in the mind and it if is. they had no food to eat like you said if the if you're all of a sudden you had no food to eat, you would realize how good it would taste. Right. Beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really not that bad. I mean, I mean, we really learned how to cook it well. You know, like yeah. everybody's- You season it, that's all. <laughs> uh, with vegetables. I mean, yeah. they're eating, they've been eating lionfish, which I thought was shocking at first. So there was a mm. whole campaign to uh, to get rid of the lionfish in the waters and so they started uh, doing that and I, I thought that was a bit but it has it has quite on, caught on because the chefs know how to prepare it well so mm -hmm. that's a whole Even different pirate fish now yeah we you need, know, to, I, I need to stop eating those <laughs> <laughs> a lot of persons are eating pirate fish I, I was surprised when I heard that I'm like no yeah, you're, we you're have you're a serious helping. problem in Jamaica with that because they've consumed all the other species and so parafish is left. And so now mm. there's a campaign to um, 
And that's another thing that's where conservation would come in. If we were able to learn how to aquaculture certain species, then mm. can help to put some back out into the ocean. So, right. you know, that's where that to bridge the gap is really important to, to learn that. So I don't know. I, I, I'm so happy to be talking to you because that's really interesting to know that you're experiencing that in, in the Bahamas. So I'm looking forward to see what it's like in, in, in the other islands if it's a, what are they experiencing and somehow right. they come together, you know, right. to kind of share our experiences. And I don't know what will come of it in the future, but it, it will be good to somehow to get it out to the general population, you know, right. what other islands are doing. So right. I don't know. <laughs> and I wanted to say too, in, ter in, in terms of aquaculture, it's not necessarily just growing farmed, uh, I'm sorry, um, species to eat, you know, so, some, I, I think I read an article about um, this movement in Jamaica where they're, they're growing ornamental fish, especially yes. marine ornamental yes. fish species. Yeah. Which I think it's a good thing because um, yeah. I think Florida ha has pretty much taken over that, that market, right? And um, marine fish species cost way more than freshwater species. Right. Sometimes almost 10 times the amount, you can be a millionaire look like right. within a couple of years. So I think that if we take over that market, we have another you know, avenue of making money, of, of promoting you know, um, businesses and, and so absolutely. on. Absolutely, absolutely. It has, it has been proven in Jamaica. Jamaica has mm -hmm. its other uh, cultural issues in terms of trying oh. to, um, because no one particular farm can create the numbers to uh, sell to the export market. So all oh. the small farmers need to get together to, um, to put together their species. So they're currently working on trying to bring that together where you know more than one person, more than one farm gets together and grow a certain kind of uh, fish because it's numbers. Mm -hmm. So mm. in Florida, um, during the winter season, they that's where they have that gap that they require and need and and would oh. love to have more species from the Caribbean, but it has mm. to be consistent and it has to be good quality. And so um, I think currently that's what they're trying to work on, but it does make money, like you said, mm. that's another right. aspect of, of mm -hmm. and it's, um, you can grow those in your backyard. You don't right. need a lot of space. So, right. uh, and they you know, go very fast. So many options, exactly. Two months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so many yeah. options. <laughs> yeah. So, do you have do you have any social media um, handles that you'd like to share? I can I can uh, put it in our link so that people can follow you or have any questions. Uh, since you are a specialist in shrimp nutrition, I'm sure there are lots of people that would love to contact you if you're interested you can uh let me know and they can uh follow you and um maybe there are some investors out there that will hear your story <laughs> hi investors <laughs> and that might be interested <laughs> um yeah so my, my linkedin right um and you're on my linkedin as well i admittedly haven't been as active as i'd like to be because i'm, I'm so busy working the behind the scenes working on on a different you know the small tedious things but right. things that, that need to be done pretty much laying the the, the the ground works for persons that are going to that are going to come after me right so this is what I'm, I'm working on right now so I'm very busy in the books writing different policies and different things like that so that's why you might not see me very active in social media but right. like as I said um aquaculture is very new um it's not uh really being done in the Bahamas per se so I really wanted to be done well and I want it to last. So there are a lot of things we have to iron out to make sure that we're um, looking after the interests of everybody, you know, and um, especially looking after the fishers who are the persons who we are, um, we don't want to sideline essentially because they're, right, they're you're thinking, targeting them as well. Yeah. Right. So all of that, I'm taking all that into, into account. I'm just working behind the scenes and, you know, as I mentioned, it takes a while to get done. But I am on LinkedIn. That's the main social media that I do like to use. I like to see what you're posting, what you're sharing, and what um, Maggie is doing. She's doing awesome work with, with yes. the punks. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. 
and, and I'm seeing a lot of things being done with spiny lobster as well because that's my next you know <laughs> right. the next thing that, that I'd like to do as well as insect meals so we have a, a big community of persons trying to make the world a better place some, somehow right and um, so I am hoping that we can bring some of that in the Bahamas Right. So we are all working towards it. And I applaud you for doing what you're doing. Right. Especially with, with, with this um, podcast, we call it. Or Well, um... well it's, it's so no, <laughs> as, a, as a chat during lockdown. I, want, I yeah. felt so disconnected and I wanted to dis, uh, connect oh, with, yeah. uh, with Jamaica and, um, the, you know, the fish farmers in Jamaica. So I started calling it a chat and a dialogue. So uh, mm. every every week it changes. So we'll see where it goes. But at some point, it's all going to a YouTube channel so that people can rewatch uh, the conversations and hopefully learn something from them. So for now, it's a chat. <laughs> it's a dialogue. Just, that's fine. I know which way it, it, it's, right. it's a good, and it's a good job right. on that. Right. And Maybe. I hope that, yeah, if my... My wish is that, yes, especially um, us scientists, women scientists in the Caribbean can somehow uh, come together one day and we'll have our own uh, conversation, maybe a, a yeah. workshop or, or um, some sort of uh, webinar. So I hope to do that one day. <laughs> Sounds good. Count me in. <laughs> yeah, great, great. Well, it was so nice chatting with you all the way in the Bahamas. And I wish you all the best. And um, I really hope that your dreams will come true and we'll get more investors and more people involved in developing aquaculture in the Bahamas. So I'm going to put all of your information in the uh, box on Instagram and YouTube and LinkedIn. So thanks so much, Amina. Thank you, Julianne. Thank you so much for your time and for inviting me to this chat. Of course. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Take care.